A debate about free speech and censorship on the social media platform X, also known as Twitter, threatened the agricultural industry within Brazil, especially John Deere's efforts to fully automate the precision agriculture that they are doing in partnership with Starlink. That's SpaceX's constellation of satellites providing internet to people around the world and are trying to grow a presence within Brazil for agriculture, but for many different purposes. This is a wild story, starting with a disagreement between Elon Musk, that's the head of SpaceX and the head of X and a judge within Brazil. I'm not going to go into the legal details about all of this. I will link an article below in case you want to catch up on what this whole drama has been. But what caught my attention about it was that Starlink got involved, even though SpaceX is a completely different company than X. I'm Lara Forsick. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. I am not an attorney, so I cannot tell you the legalities of freezing Starlink's assets to cover the fines imposed by this Brazilian judge on the platform X. I don't believe it would be legal here in the United States, but I certainly can't tell you about Brazilian legal system. But basically, the logic is that because X and Starlink, SpaceX, are owned by the same person, that the two are related enough that the judge felt it was within his legal power to get Starlink involved in a spat that had nothing to do with Starlink. My understanding of the situation is that this Brazilian judge wanted Elon Musk to block X access, Twitter access, via Starlink. And when Elon Musk refused, and I'm, I'm not going to go into the whole situation there because we all know that Elon Musk can be inflammatory, but when he initially refused, they not only froze the financial assets of Starlink within Brazil, they threatened to seize equipment from Starlink's 25 ground stations in Brazil, which would significantly alter the quality of the internet signal. The legalities of all of this is what first caught my eye, but what really caught my attention was an article published a few days ago, I will link it below, giving us an update about this program that John Deere is running with Starlink in the United States and Brazil. Starlink is somewhat new still to the Brazilian market. They started opening up access back in January 2022. And according to one of the articles that I will link below, Starlink has 250,000 customers in Brazil and has captured 0.5% of the total market. So there's a lot of growth potential here. And specifically, John Deere chose Starlink as their partner to connect the machines that are running in the United States and Brazil to start with via the Starlink satellite constellation. So announced in January of this year, John Deere is providing an aftermarket kit to farmers on the ground in Brazil who want to connect their machines to Starlink. And these kits, they are ruggedized, they are protected against wind, but basically they are a Starlink terminal and a cellular connection. This all plays to John Deere's goal of having a fully autonomous farming system by 2030. I am no expert in agriculture and farming, so I'm just gonna read you what the statistics are that are in this article that I will link below. John Deere has roughly 600,000 machines connected and is working to connect 1.5 million machines. And there's this fantastic quote from the John Deere Global Combined Business Manager, Ryan Crow. He says, high speed satellite connectivity is what will help us feed, fuel, and clothe the growing population. So the update that I read a few days ago was about the early access program. They hadn't planned to fully roll out this program until early next year, but they gave early access so that farmers in Brazil could use this for their current crop yields. And in Brazil, the program has exceeded expectations. And they specifically mentioned the fact that they can connect their machines remotely to dealers that might be many hours away, in some places even seven hours away. So instead of a dealer traveling hours to a machine, they can connect remotely via Starlink. Imagine a scenario where the Brazilian government, or this, this judge in particular, he orders that Starlink ground station equipment is removed and that halts this agricultural program that John Deere is running and that harms the agricultural community, not only within Brazil, but I assume Brazil has exports to the United States and other parts of the world. I don't know about you, but I like to eat, and I'm sure the Brazilians like to eat, and I'm sure the farmers within Brazil want to increase their yields and get paid. So this whole situation has unintended consequences that I'm sure this judge that's in a spat with Elon Musk had not even considered. There's other benefits to having Starlink within Brazil. There's another article that I will link below that talked about how Starlink, because of the multi-satellite constellation, can connect boats on the Amazon. It has connected at least one city hall in Brazil, which allowed a local government to do their job more quickly for their citizens. And 
controversially, it has connected remote tribes within Brazil. There's one article in particular that's fascinating that I will link below that talked about connecting the Marubu people, that's a tribe of 2,000 people in the Brazilian Amazon, and the pros and cons of now having access to the internet via Starlink. Brazil is not the only place where Starlink has benefits. I recently read an article that talked about connecting different remote areas of Alaska and how much that has had a benefit in terms of connecting family, as well as getting an education and providing emergency services. And there are probably many, many stories like this about Starlink. And this whole video is not necessarily a commercial about Starlink. I want to mention that connecting remote populations with satellites is not new. It's just new in the terms of having a constellation in low Earth orbit with low Earth latency. Companies like Intelsat are involved. So actually the article that talked about John Deere also mentioned that Intelsat is being used by a competitor company uh, selling agricultural equipment. Intelsat and SES are going through a merger right now. I don't think that merger is complete, but I actually listened to a podcast called Satellite Stories put out by SES. And there's one episode in particular, if I can find it, I will link to it below, that talked about connecting different islands and the way that has benefited businesses on these islands just to have that connectivity. So much of the discourse surrounding Starlink and less so surrounding other satellite constellations that are in existence or have been proposed. Amazon's Project Kuiper or OneWeb or you know some of these other ones that are going to start populating the skies soon. There has been so much resistance to having these satellite constellations, particularly within the astronomy community at first and still ongoing. And I am a trained astronomer, so I understand that you don't want those satellite streaks in your astronomy images. However, I do believe that we are innovative enough to separate the signal from the noise. I've done it plenty when analyzing ast astronomical data. And there are ways to work around. Of course, SpaceX has been working with the astronomy community to make it so that those streaks are less visible by lowering the reflective of the satellites or turning the satellites away at certain points. So there are workarounds. I have never been able to get on board with the people who think that we should not be allowing Starlink satellites or other types of satellite constellations for internet or that we should be significantly reducing them or putting barriers because of the benefits of life on Earth. We need to be concerned about our own humanity here on Earth and providing food for the world, providing clothing for the world, providing connectivity and emergency services and all the ways that people can flourish by having reliable access to the internet. I have not seen any article that talked about this whole Brazilian ex-Starlink situation, link it to all the different ways that Starlink benefits Brazil, the Brazilian people, including this John Deere program. I would love to see more people talk about this holistically so we can understand all these different unintended consequences and make sure they don't happen. Now, today's news, or was it yesterday? Anyway, Starlink has decided to block X, so their ground equipment will not be seized, so this will not be an issue. But what happens if this escalates, if the equipment is seized after all, or if someone else in some other country where there's remote populations decides to do something similar and threaten Starlink, and of course we've existed this long without Starlink, but now that people are getting a taste of it, now that people are getting used to reliable connectivity via satellite, I think it would be unfair to take that away from them or to even threaten to take that away from them. If you're watching this on Starlink, let me know because I'm actually very curious. I've never had Starlink, so I'm curious to know how many people who watch these videos are watching it via Starlink. The world changes, and I think it's important to keep humanity as a whole in our minds when we talk about these issues.